and it's turned in by Stan John. It could be the goal that takes Birmingham City to Cardiff. Ronnie Ball puts it forward. It's full time at the den. It's full time for Millwall's promotion hopes. Birmingham continue to the Millennium Stadium thanks to Stan John. Fantastic memories. That's what got us there, wasn't it? And I'd like to welcome up to the stage, if they'd all like to come up, give them your appreciation as they do so. I'd like the two goalkeepers, Nico Vassan and Ian Bennett. Also, Jeff Kenner. Jeff, if you'd like to come up, mate. And Darren Purse as well, please. Percy, if you can make your way to the stage. So, let me ask you for uh, Percy, what's it like 10 years on to be back here in a, on a night like this? I just can't believe there's that many people here. 600, something like that? Yeah. Fantastic. Great, great turnout. You've always, always been great fans, and it's, uh, it's a great night for everybody to, uh, to be back here 10 years later. Nico looking sharp. The old Nico trick. has never looked sharp in his life. What are you talking about? He's Belgium. Now, Jono sent me the wink about your dress sense. He called it Scandinavian dress sense. Are you having that? I'm having everything. You know, John O'Shaughnessy stop, man. Now listen, Nico, we should talk about you because whilst at the end of the evening we'll be chatting to Darren about what it's like to score a penalty in a playoff final, you did your job at and the other half of the penalty shootout. Uh, one save and uh, forced a miss. Tell us about the, what it was like for you in, the, in that atmosphere at the end of the game. Well, I think uh, the biggest advantage that night is that the penalties were taken in front of our fans. Mm. Um, I think that was a massive, uh, massive task for the Norwich players to come up and take that penalty. You know, it uh, amounts the pressure on them. But uh, we, we, play, we played a good game and I felt quite confident going into the penalty shootout because we also, well, uh, paid uh, or practiced on it on the training ground. So, yeah, it was um, just basically finishing off what we started. Mm. Benno, as usual, had a broken finger or something was wrong with you. <laughs> and ten years on, I've still got the same broken finger. He's still finger. got a broken finger now. <laughs> but listen, you played your part uh, during the course of the season. But uh, this is the thing, goalkeepers, they're, uh, they're either supposed to hate each other or love each other or not work together or got this sort of thing, oh, I wish I had his place. What was it like working with Nico? Oh, brilliant. Nico was fantastic, good lad, good camaraderie, on and off the pitch, and end of the day, only one person can play, and listen, Nico did his job and did it fantastic. End of the day, it was all about getting promotion. You had, did you have any money on it? Uh, a few quid. Yeah, I thought you might have. <laughs> you were at the club for a long time, so you know, just as much as most people, because you were Barry's first signing, you know as much as anybody what these fans had gone through in the run-up to that day at Cardiff. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I should have known what was happening when I signed, because he signed me in a Father Christmas outfit, Barry, so... Uh, <laughs> listen, I mean, things haven't changed, but no, it was great. Uh, it's fantastic, really, to see all the lads and see all the familiar faces. You can see the players who are playing and who have retired, some of the state of them. Yeah. Jono. But, uh, Name I'll, names, Benno. Uh, Jono. But, <laughs> but no, listen, I mean, it's fantastic, fantastic turnout, and the lads have just done... Great, really, to, to put the club properly on the map. Now, that I've got loads of questions that are coming here from, from good people on the floor. There's one generally to the team. I'll throw this one at you, Percy. Whose fault was the Norwich goal? I weren't playing, so it weren't mine. Yeah, so that you can look from the, from the, from the touchline from you. Whose fault was it? You well, can dig someone out here. Gr Grange gets a lot of stick for you. Did they run underneath his foot or something like that? Grange's not here, so we can blame him, can't we? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I think he was a little bit gutted, obviously, when when the goal was scored, because he, he did let it go underneath his foot. And, uh, he, was, uh, he was just happy at the end of the day that we, we managed to scrape through and, and win on the penalties because he was, uh, he was distraught once the goal, their goal had gone in. I mentioned that banner when I brought you into the room. Voodoo, hoodoo, gypsies, curse, take us up for Darren Purse. I don't know whether the person that made that banner is here tonight. Uh, no, clearly not. But <laughs> That's that question gone then. What does that mean to you? What did that mean to you, though? I mean, you, obviously, you'd had your injury. You knew you couldn't play. And yet that someone... Had, and it wasn't just written in crayon or blood or anything. It was a proper vinyl banner that had been done just for you, mate. Somebody's gone through that, obviously, just because you'd missed the final. Um, obviously, getting sent off for the Sheffield United game was, uh, 
was horrible, but um, I managed to play in the, the two Millwall games, which mm. was fantastic, um, to play against your boy team and knock them out of the playoffs. I was uh, ecstatic about that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, the, the, the Millwall night, that was, my, that was my cup final. It was a fantastic night. And uh, obviously to go to Wem uh, Cardiff and, and go and get promoted, it was, uh, it was brilliant for everybody. And it was just a great day out. Now, um, Jeff, another question here. Mark Evans has asked this on table four. He said, did the players take inspiration by the way the Millwall players celebrated at the final whistle when they got a 1-1 at St Andrews, thought it was job done? I, I, I don't really think that came into it. I think it was, it was more that we were disappointed with the, with the result, obviously. But we were never in doubt that we could go down there and get a result, you know? So the whole... The fact that they had celebrated so well, it, 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 I don't think that made any difference. It was just a case of we were totally focused on what we needed to do and we went down there and did it, and it was a, a, that didn't really come into it. Now, Jeff, you're the quiet, uh, intelligent, older, wiser head in the definitely, squad. Yeah. But I, I have You've got to, more grey hair than everybody else as well. I have to wiser, ask intelligent, what older. happened on a pre-season tour of Scotland when you were meant to be back in the hotel for a midnight curfew? I have no idea. <laughs> a question here for uh, Benno. Grab the mic, mate. From Rich on table 38. Are you still claiming to be six foot tall? <laughs> Listen, with my studs on, I'm six foot. <laughs> Listen, we had a kit, man, and I just say, put the longest, biggest <laughs> stud you can find. So, yeah. Uh, just fine. Nico, just t tell us what it was like to be, be in that squad, the, the team spirit. I mean, you've heard the stories we've heard already from, from Jeff and from Darren and Benno, what it was like to be part of that squad. Well, those, those stories typify um, what we meant. Um, they used to give you a stick about your nose, didn't they? Well, thank you. Thank you for reminding they me did, of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was sharp. Yeah. yeah that's, I was, uh, <laughs> no, no. The lads were magnificent. Not only did we win promotion based on cam cam uh, camaraderie and, uh, and good team spirit, but we also stayed up the next year. And, and it just shows you that uh, we were willing to work for each other. And um, we never gave up. Fantastic. For now, ladies and gentlemen, Darren Purse, Jeff Kenner, Ian Bennett, Nico Vassen. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Jeff. Nice one, Percy. Cheers, Benno. If I can now get to come to the stage, Michael Johnson, Steve Vickers, Brian Hughes, and Stan Lazaridis. So, Jono, why are you still wearing your Wembley club suit? Uh, I've got. A... <laughs> I can guarantee that's Jeff in it. No, it's, that's Craig Upton from Table Eight wanting to know why you're still wearing the same suit you were wearing ten years ago. Because it still fits ten years later. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Jono, tell us what it's been like putting this night together and what it means to you. It means so much, obviously. You know, to to being around the club and still hear such fondness for this um, group of players and to be part of that generation, especially, you know, among such difficult times in the club. So it's nice that we can all gather here and, you know, celebrate and, you know, tell the lads and the lads can speak to you about how fond we all think of you as fans and hopefully some of you feel towards the lads. So it's a special night and to see the likes of... <laughs> Stan Lazaridis all the way from down under. Tell you what, mate, that's dedication. That is Pure dedication, love. mate. Pure love. Pure now, love. If, if I know you like I think I know you, you'd have known down to the very last half penny how much that trip would have cost you. <laughs> because you were the club's financial advisor, oh, when you were the money man. I don't know about money, man, but uh, oh, look, I love playing for this club, and um, when Jono gave me the call, I, I thought about it. I said, Jono, give me 24 hours, and then I then literally a few hours later, I said, all right, John, I'm coming. And, um, I mean, I love being here, I'll be honest, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> But um, I had a couple of hours up my sleeve and I had to drive around and went to the old training ground, went to the uh, school my daughters went and um, went to St Andrews and I got a bit emotional, you know, it's like I remember the, um, the times going there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. We remember it too, mate. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, look, it was, hold on, you know, we had some real good nights and it, 
you know, we'll, pin, we'll pinpoint the year from promotion because that whole year was great. Um, but there were so many great games. And this group of players, and we'll talk about it, um, the reason I, I think w why we got promoted that year, I think, we, it, it didn't matter if someone was ahead of you and played. Um, we were right behind each other. And, um, you know, Jeff Horsfields, Brian Hughes, John O's, Percy's great. You know, these sort of guys that, you know, we weren't any airs and graces about us. We just got on, the, got on the field, did a job, communicated with all the fans. We used to talk to the fans all the time. Yeah. The hierarchy, the board, it, it didn't really matter. And, and I, think, um, I think that year when we got promoted, it was just, a, I think, a, a fantastic achievement for all of us. And um, I'll never forget it. I'll, you know, it's one of those special nights. Now, Steve Vickers, what the hell were you doing on the left-hand side of the Millwall penalty area in no the last idea. two minutes? No idea. I'm glad I was. Oh yeah. I mean, what? An, I mean, what? An, I mean, I wasn't there. I was back at St Andrews that night doing because they had a a, a beam back. But to be in that atmosphere, which was pretty well tense, doesn't tell the half of it, does it? No. It was um, an unbelievable night, really, with with a fantastic ending. Apart from the riot afterwards, was a little bit bit yeah. much, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the game itself was phenomenal. Everybody played the part that night, and you know, no more so than the fans, um, which again were, were superb. Um, my lasting memory is just turning around to salute the fans at, as the whistle went, me and Nico, and then turning around again, realizing there was nobody on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody had got off, and the police were coming on from the side, and the Millwall fans were coming on from the other <laughs> end. And I was surprised how quickly I could run towards the end of a match, actually, to be fair. So. Now, I've got, a few, uh, I've got a few questions here. I don't know whether one knows the answer to this one. Who was the next penalty taker? Yeah, it was After me. Darren. That was you, was it? Me. There's a story behind it, actually. Let's hear it. Um, Brucey came up to me the night before the game and said to me that he wants Tommy Mooney to be the fifth penalty taker. And I've always been the fifth penalty taker since I've been at the club. And I've never missed a penalty while I've been here. So I wasn't, I wasn't sort of ecstatic about not taking the fifth, but um, Brucey made, made his uh, feelings known. Um, we had a little bit of a discussion, and he wanted me to go on the fourth. A bit of a discussion. It was the night before the big game, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I was on the fourth penalty. Um, Tommy was obviously on the fifth, being the normal penalty taker. Obviously, the game kicked off. Tommy gets substituted in the second half, goes to penalties, and I go over to Brucey when we decide who's taking the penalties and tell him I want the fifth. Obviously, Darren comes on and obviously takes the fourth, which is <laughs> obviously the winning penalty. And I could obviously, honestly, honestly say that I wouldn't have wished it to be in, on anyone else, being a, a local <laughs> Brummie lad. Now, Brian. What's all this Bobby George nonsense I keep hearing about? I used to have a couple of uh, gold rings back in, back in the day when I was coming. <laughs> coming, coming. Coming from Liverpool over to Birmingham, he used to have a go at me all the time. And I think he was a bit jealous, actually. <laughs> we know Bobby George, and he stands with the darts, and all you can see is these gold, these gold rings and chains. When you see signed, honestly, he walked in, we thought it was Mr. T. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so he quickly got the nickname Bobby George, which obviously you can still see he didn't like. <laughs> and on that bombshell, we'll say thanks to Steve Vickers, Michael Johnson, Stan Lazaridis, and Brian Hughes. Thank you, fellas. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you Steve. Fantastic. Great to see all these wonderful players back. And now we're going to welcome to the stage our final four players. Would you please put your hands together, give it up for Jeff Horsfield, Darren Carter, Dili Adibola, and Stan John. How often do you watch that penalty, Darren? Be honest. To be honest, not that much. Because um, you don't like the hair. The hair, the shirt looks about four sizes too big for me. Um, but yeah, most definitely the hair. But no, it's, um, it's one of them that... 
<laughs> Love you too. Um, well done, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's one it's one that I've I've got obviously hid away, and um, any time I, I sort of feel a bit down on myself, I'll, I'll pluck it out and, and stick it on. And have a have a watch. He was the kid, wasn't he? You you had to look after this boy. You know, he's he was raw. He was young, and you know, you had to look after him, didn't you? Well, to be honest, when he scored the winner uh, after we got promoted. I think after five days, uh, I was still married to my first wife, and we got promoted on a Monday. I was divorced the Monday after, <laughs> believe it. Because I never went home till Sunday, and, and, and fair play to the fans, and that they were different class, because I don't think me and Katz bought a drink or even gained taxis home. Not that I got many taxis home, uh, but the Blues fans paid for them, and, and they were different class. Let's not forget what you did, Stern, in the semi-final. Nice to have you here, by the way. Thank you, thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming all the way over. It's a real pleasure. The guys like you and Stan, you, you, make, you, you know, guys like you and Stan, you come over here, you make all the effort to, to be part of it, and we really do appreciate it. This is a question from Craig. He wants to know, what was the better feeling? Scoring the winner against Millwall or the last minute equaliser for them lot down the road in that 2-2? I mean, tell us about the, the Millwall goal. No, the last minute goal definitely was, was yeah. special. Yeah. Um, I think uh, in the Millwall game, um, I had a chance early, uh, kind of scuffed it and went wide. So I was hoping to get a second chance at, at it so I can make amends. And uh, Steve Vickers was high up the pitch and played it wide out for me and I uh, ran and get a tap in. Fantastic goal. Really meant up. Now listen. <laughs> Dealey, welcome. Lovely to see you here, mate. Now, it's important that, that people like you are here as well. Obviously, you weren't on the pitch, you weren't involved in Cardiff, but you played your part during the course of the season. What was it like for you, looking at what happened at that day at Cardiff? What did it mean to you? Because you've been at the club for a while under Trevor. Yeah, no, it, it, it meant a lot to me. For the whole season, I was out injured, and the back end, I went out on loan, but I always kept an eye out for the results. Um, the, the actual final, I couldn't watch half of it because it was just so nerve-wracking, but like, um, I was uh, as excited as everyone else for, for Blue Seat to finally get promoted. When Lee Clark made his debut for Fulham, it was at Stans, and you were playing for Fulham at the time. Yeah, I know, I know Lee really well, and I've, I've seen his career progress through the management, the playing and the management, and he's done all his licenses he can, and he's a good man management, and, and he comes from a great place from Newcastle and he knows how the fans feel about football and, and I think he's a great appointment. I, I spoke to him yesterday, I rang him up yesterday yep. and I said to him that it's a great club, he's got great fans and hopefully he can get the back in. And, and we know what the financial trouble is at Birmingham City at the minute and hopefully we can turn that round and we can get behind him because I know that Lee Clark are one of the best. I know Ben O has worked under him at Huddersfield and he worked really, really hard in, in whatever he can do, and hopefully he can do that and turn Birmingham and get Birmingham. And I texted him, I said, you better get my club up into the Premier League in the next year. <laughs> I, I, I'll leave it with you, Darren. I mean, you know, when it comes to what's written on your gravestone in many, many years from now, I don't know what, when you look back, I don't know, what this is going to mean to you when you're in your, your final years, but this is a squad that I think everybody in this room, from what Ors has just said, working class players for a working class club, and this squad I think summed that up better than any other squad I can remember. Yeah, with, yeah, without a doubt, I think obviously you can just see by the turnout tonight and whenever I speak to any supporters um, about that day and that season, um, there's always fond memories, uh, and I was very fortunate, to be honest, as a young lad coming into a team like that, with you know pros like you know Jeff Stern, Dealey, uh, Jeff Kenner, everyone helped me uh, along the way, and you know 17 stroke 18 at that time, hadn't really trained with the first team too much, and uh, they brought me in and, and basically learnt me the ropes, uh, plain and simple. So um, I owe a lot to them uh, for that season, and uh, I've always said from that date going to be pretty hard to top that uh, in my career. Uh, I'd love to, obviously, but 
Um, I think that day will go down as probably the most special day in my career. And uh, like I say, if I top that, I've done very, very well. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let's uh, hear it one more time for the men that matter. Stern John. <laughs> Dealey Adebola. <laughs> Jeff Horsfield. <laughs> and Darren Carter.